Hell yeah. Got Spacey Jane here. We've got Pepper and Caleb. How are you guys going? Great, so thanks. good, thank you. I'm thrilled to have you here. I was saying before, I'm a fake fan, I feel. I'm like the deepest of fans, but the fakest of fans because I only listen to your music on vinyl. Damn, you just wanted to get that in. I know. <laughs> Very cultured. Yeah. So cultured, like not into Spotify, more into like just listening to the music. But because cool. of that, I know the words, uh, no, the names of any of the songs. So I mm. feel like a bit like... Mm. Unbelievable. Frankly. I know. Mm. Usually I could be like, oh, like the lyric from, from this song, I can... But I'm I'm just gonna go. I love all your shit. Thank you know. You. <laughs> I mean, I definitely growing like having CDs in the car when I first got my license. It's the same thing. I didn't really know what the songs were called. No, I think because you turn like the moment. The CD you're not gonna do that if you're enjoying it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Or you're driving. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we were talking before uh, before we started the interview, and I said, "Shut up! Stop mm. talking!" Yeah. When I was yelling at you both mm -hmm. um, about <laughs> uh, writing music in general. So your the vinyl that I listened to is Sunlight, your first album. And uh, we were joking about like, what does it sound like? And I was like, just like kind of sad. Um, yep. And I think it's interesting to think about, because I realised that the music that I like is all mainly really sad, really depressing, horny, or um, like about being in love. Mm. Do you think you can write music about anything that isn't one of those three categories? Maybe um, kids, like the Wiggles do a pretty good job of talking about other stuff. Like cars and fruit salad and things like that. So true. So maybe certain genres. For me, it's like the most accessible feelings when you go digging around your brain a little bit are the big ones, which are usually the shitty ones, the sad ones, mm. I think. And also, it's just way easy to make that sound beautiful and dramatic, mm. I think. It's versus, I don't, I'm not really sure how to write in a way that seems really joyful and happy and then also sincere. Mm. Not to say that I'm not happy. Either. Okay. But like, I'm cool. Okay. It's chill. Tell your yeah. therapist that. <laughs> I'm I do. Not, I'm not I do. Happy. I do. I do. I'm, I'm having the best time <laughs> ever. Yeah. Do you ever uh, write a song and think needs a bit more male on it? Needs a bit more drama to the lyrics. You're saying it isn't dramatic <laughs> enough sometimes, and you're like <laughs> not sad enough. <laughs> yeah. No, I try to make it less dramatic sometimes. Oh, I really? Think. Well, yeah, because it can be. It can sound a little bit unhinged, like when you just <laughs> say something that's like really raw. I think it's something you present them in a little, uh, sort of package them in a more friendly way. Do you think so? Friendly way listener friendly way uh i mean i'm not sure if that's like right but that's definitely something that i think about and do you change the way you write depending on if you think it's friendly enough i don't know it's more like this is going to be heard by so many people how is this the clearest way i can say it rather than just this kind of like word vomit stream of consciousness thing and i think by cleaning it up like that it usually it feels more like something that I could release like into accessible the world. and like relatable yeah. to more people. They can understand it. Yeah, more. I think that's part of it. Yeah, but then it's funny with Sunlight. The first album was I didn't. I don't think we planned on it being something that resonated with lots of people. But they mm. really did. It really did resonate with people. And I think that was us realizing that like nothing that we say or feel is that special. There's like a lot of universal experiences, mm. and that lot like a lot of people have gone through the same thing, especially at this age. And so yeah. sunlight was kind of a word vomit mm -hmm. and then it related so. yeah. and then you dialed it back i think a little bit yeah maybe subconsciously i'm just sort of thinking about it now that you're asking about it so that's the <laughs> point baby yeah <laughs> damn, you got me thinking <laughs> got me thinking on this chair <laughs> so you feel like you did try to make it more mass appeal and kind of tone down your feelings well, you shouldn't should be true to yourself <laughs> i think part of the intention of the of here comes everybody was to talk about something more universal like mm. try to speak to an experience I had from this perspective of someone else like leaving that period of my life, leaving my early 20s and getting my mid 20s. <laughs> it was not really like much, like it wasn't some like moment where I like, stepped through the door, but it felt like I'm just leaving a chapter behind. It's not the biggest milestone, is it? But it's also, no. it is, yeah, it is different. It feel, you're not 30? No. How old no. are you? 26. Crazy, 26. Yeah, we're all pretty, I'm, I'm the oldest by um, Ashton's, uh, he's got, I got two weeks on Ashton. Um, we we're actually in the same hospital, born together, because I, well, I have complications, so I stuck around a bit longer. Right, um, just waiting for him. Yeah, just waiting for him to come waiting out. For him going, I can't. I'm fine. I can't, I can't live life without this. <laughs> yeah. So, did you know each other when you were mm -mm. in the hospital? Yeah. <laughs> Having coffee. Yeah, we were hanging, yeah. <laughs> um, no, we didn't meet until we were 19. Yeah. Wow, yep. that's crazy. So, two of you met in high school and two of you met in uni, correct? Yeah, Kieran and I met in high school. We were in a band together. Yeah. And then Ashen and Amelia. Oh, yes, Amelia. And then. I met through a mutual friend yeah. when they were looking for a new bass player. Pep was like our saviour. We thought, we were like, oh, I guess that's the band over. And then we found, well, we didn't, 
So I didn't actually think like that, but we were very stressed about like, holy mm. shit, what's gonna happen? And Pepper came in and like, I always remember saying the first <laughs> rehearsal we had, it was, she was like jumping around playing the songs in rehearsal and it was the most invigorating little moment for all of us. It was mm. so exciting and that was it. What about Pepper was perfect for the band? Because it would be a hard spot to fill when mm. you all have such distinct personalities, I guess, in the band. Everything, I'm perfect. Yeah. That's I what mean, I that's felt. It. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's weird, like, logistically speaking, we needed someone that was kind of able to spend a lot of time on the band but not get paid because none of us were getting paid. So that was, like, a massive ask. And people right. was like, yeah, fucking whatever, and did it. <laughs> and, and then also um, someone that could sing really well, which Pepper can do, and play bass really well and was young and excited about the prospect of being in a band and wow. was like, whatever. And yeah, she just like went for it, which is crazy now in hindsight to think about someone just like, yeah, whatever. I Thank felt you. <laughs> the same way. Like I remember getting in the car after the first rehearsal and calling my mom and I was almost in tears. I was just like, it was so much fun. Aww. Yeah, I loved it so much from the start. So yeah, very glad they took me on board. That's amazing. I saw somewhere that one of your fans um, had gone to 20 plus gigs of Whoa. yours. Did you, did you you know about this? Someone like, I think yeah, someone said on your on socials that they today, had really? seen you guys yeah. 20 times. That's amazing. Does that kind of make you feel like, I don't know, is, what's the thing that makes you feel like you've kind of made it or that you're connecting in the way that you want to? Uh, is it things like that, having diehard fans mm. or... Is it how many vinyls you sell to me or something? Seeing people's <laughs> emotions in the crowd is yeah. really special. I remember the first when time. When people I cry, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I cried for DMAs. I just wanted to hold it in for this for you guys. I'm sorry. I should have put it I out. I appreciate you holding it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I remember the first time we saw people posting their Spotify wrapped and we were their top artists. And mm. that was like, whoa, we're someone's favorite band. Like, yeah. That's a wild concept do you ever feel like a bit jaded like it, you kind of have to let it like bounce off you because otherwise you'll get an ego or something <laughs> <laughs> no, i think our default position is being so uh in like d in such disbelief that we're here and mm. that it could sort of go away at any point that we feel yeah i don't know if we necessarily ever sat back and be like yeah we, we earn this it's kind of like we're looking for the next thing mm. and hoping that we can keep this alive and like we desperately want to make really good music still like we don't think that we can just automatically make good music like that's a yeah. fear that we all have like is this going to be a good record and is this going to be a good show and how do we do that and so i think those are the things that go through our mind more than anything and i think if anything we probably don't acknowledge enough of the nice things like that i was gonna say i think you should take the moment to sit back and try and absorb it because yeah. i think australia is really bad as well for tall poppy syndrome and always thinking you have to do better and do more mm. but I mean, everyone loves Spacey J. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> obsessed. Like, we were all losing our shit when you guys agreed to do this. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. It was a no-brainer for us. Oh, my God. But I think that it's important that you can sit back and absorb it and maybe make some happy music or something. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> so you're doing two songs for us, um, Yet and Lots of Nothing. Mm -hmm. So run us through Yet. It's a pretty uh, intense song, lyrically, and I think it's, um, it's hard to not relate to it you know, about um, not uh, telling or needing to tell your friends that you're, you're sad and finding the vulnerability and the strength to be able to do that. So is that from a particular time in your life or just in general? Yeah, it's just more in general, I think. But something that I went through personally, like I think a lot of young people and young men go through, mm. and that, like pushing 20 or maybe it happens when you're 30, I don't know, but it depends on where you <laughs> are in your young. life. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happens when you're 30. <laughs> no, <I don't> <laughs> but yeah, that period of of like being vulnerable among your mates. And mm. that's like really good experience I've had in this band. I think we all maybe share that experience of like being able to like be so open and when you're feeling absolutely terrible and you have to be in this situation, but so many people aren't. And it leads to these like, uh, it leads to resentment, I think, and it can make people grow apart. But we're lucky that we sort of like share things pretty openly, which is really nice. Like you used to glue yourself together not to start to resent each other and yeah, in yeah. the fight. Yeah, it's good. Wow, crazy. Um, yeah, <laughs> I like that song. We actually thought, we, I remember we were pushing for that to like, like it's got to be a single. Yeah. I don't know. We love that song so much. I, lo I love that song. Yeah. I'm obsessed with that song. I think it's amazing. And then Lots of Nothing, you wrote it in 2020 and mm -hmm. then you re-released it with Benny yep. this year. Why the re-release? Just because she offered? And you're like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the deal? Because she's incredible. I met her once. So good. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, Benny, do whatever you want to me. 
<laughs> it's fine. Yeah. We basically did that with the song. It was like, here you go. I just I gave her like a one page of this is what it's about. Kind of here are the lyrics and mm. what year is ninety percent of what she did on the first take. She just sent it back and that was it. It wasn't supposed to happen. Well, it wasn't going to happen. She had some scheduling stuff and then we woke up one morning and it was just in the inbox. The thing it was so perfect. That and is yeah. She's crazy. Like we all like her music and we knew she was good, but seeing someone turn that around like that and just fit in, like that's really crazy songwriting. It was cool. That's so amazing. Yeah. Well, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thanks Abby. for having us. Let's Appreciate hear the tunes. It. Alrighty. Woohoo. Yay! <laughs> I know you're scared of this cold on the bathroom floor. I'm not looking for a way out of just you. You'll be there when I come for you through the door I'm not looking for a way out just yet I've got to tell my friends how I'm feeling Let them know I'm sad when I see them um, I've missed you, you're like sunshine Should I leave you? You're the saddest that I've seen you. Please pick up. I'm dying to tell someone. No one's heard me crying so long. That's okay, my problems are not for them. And if you feel the same way, I understand. I've got to tell my friends how I'm feeling And I'm sad when I see them um, I've missed you, you're like sunshine Yeah. 
if you really want to stay Can we in a third car stay? Cause I don't want no part of this I just wanna be here in case It's just been a long lunch, honey It's setting up on the bill I don't know where you get that money She says, don't ask, I won't tell Filled with lots of nothing Come on, you must think Something I've been Falling in love to fall right up Break apart without sound But I never felt like I was coming home So I don't feel the change So can you walk me home? Stay clear Is that the idea here? What was that one line That told me last time Say I never felt like us I was alive I felt it She said, call me when you get home I would if I could If I had lost my phone my head's filled with lots of nothing Come on, you must think Something I've been falling in love to fall